And then if someone has a name like that, I suppose one has to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Does not reflect my ideology in no way. I was named by my father when I was 28 days old. It's too young to protest. <laughs> and I decided to keep my name because my father did not give much else to me. December 1984, I remember seeing these visuals by Raghunath. And I remember my stomach churning, not with disgust, but with rage. And I remember that I was moved in the true sense of the word. And I knew that I had to do something. And I told my mom that I am going to going for an inter-school sports meet in Nagpur. And instead followed some relief workers to Bhopal City. I don't remember the train ride. Right? Perhaps the visuals stayed with me so strongly that I cannot, cannot recollect the train ride. Right? When I reached Bhopal, uh, my eyes were stinging so badly. The stench of the gas was still there. And I was totally upset with the utter chaos caused by total breakdown of what we call government machinery. I couldn't survive and I ran back in a day and a half. I was 16. What stayed with me, however, are two things. One, that if you are poor, disadvantaged, and marginalized, you could be treated as cockroaches. And two, the power of images and personal narratives, that they really have the power to move you. So I became a documentary filmmaker. And I started <coughs> making films on human rights issues, trying to bring out untold stories, trying to challenge uh, our comfortable notions of traditions, power, systems, culture, uh, caste. Uh, and I started doing my films when in the, in the early 90s. And uh, for those of you who were present during that time, internet has still not happened. <coughs> Facebook, Twitter, nobody dreamt of. Uh, there were four channels on TV. And suddenly, there was a boom of television stations. To the, uh, and when that happened, some of us thought that finally, uh, people's issues will find center stage. Not just the boom in television, but also in newspaper and magazines. But very soon now we know, whoever watches TV, that what television gives us. I don't know about you, but I for sure have stopped watching news for information. <laughs> I only watch news for entertainment. <laughs>
this is our people, some of the people who produce content. So what was what must we do? And I believe we should occupy media. <laughs> and when I say we, I don't, I don't necessarily want to start with people in this hall, but the most vulnerable and most disadvantaged people, because their voice and their opinions matter the most. In fact, if you believe in true, diverse and vibrant democracy, their voices should be heard first. So in the last few years, uh, along with my wonderful team, I started doing this thing called democratizing media, especially democratizing content creation media. We have trained so far about 300 community filmmakers or community video activists who go out with small cameras like these, much smaller now these days, we are as small as these now, um, and create their create content. Of the 300 people, 65 of them are organized uh, in a program called India Unheard and they're spread across the United States. Let me begin to show you some clips and some pieces of what they create. I'm going to go uh, ahead because I've lost some, some of your minutes just doing this. So, uh, can click on this place. Percentage of India is connected on the internet? 
Today, guys. What? Three what? Three people? Eighty percent? Seventy percent? Over eighty percent of the people are at the group and they have their own relationship. We have about seven hundred and ninety million subscribers to seven. Um, some people also dispute that number. Uh, but 8% of the country have internet. Regular internet, 4%. And let me define regular. If you access your email once in a month, that's regular. <laughs> it's like the below poverty line. <laughs> you're a below poverty, just push the line down. <laughs> One thing I have just declared that you know, if, you're, if you have what, 24 rupees in Guinea and 28 rupees in Urban, you are not poor. Yes. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. So imagine that situation when we are facing, in, 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 in Bangalore, in a reputed institute of technology, we are facing this right here. Imagine how long will it take for poor people in disadvantaged communities who have a lot to say to be able to shoot and upload instantly. When will that happen in this country? The technology on paper does exist. I mean, you can on your Android phones or whatever phones. Shoot and publish to YouTube. But of course it takes forever, right? You can do that thing. <laughs> you know what that is, by the way? It's called a car chakra. <laughs> Is that is, is the, is the un, un, unfinishing wheel of time? Just take that away. Yeah, let me just. <laughs> and that's that's when you meditate. When that happens. You, of course, when you are young, you start by cursing. And then sometimes you reach, and I realize when I travel to all these places where people have like no internet access and cell phones don't work, etc., etc. Then I realized that you know the best is to meditate. So I just want to try and give you a picture of the of the country that we often talk about. And people often say that there is India and there is Bharat. They are wrong. There are thousand Indias and thousand Bharats. There's not just one India and one Bharat. It's not it's not like two different there's many layers in between. Like here, and, and India and Bharat is not a geographical construct also. India and Bharat can reside in one person. Examine the issue of caste or, or patriarchy. One person could be could embody 16th century and 21st century, or 16th century and 22nd century, for that matter. If you come to Goa, you will, which is where which is where I live. Uh, you find uh, uh, men and women in uh, very little clothes uh, and women. Uh, wearing this white, red, white, red, white, red bangles, which in the north, uh, newlyweds women wear. So we are quite capable, like we have an iPad, and one of the apps we download on the iPad is matrimonial.com. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That you want to download a 21st century instrument, a 16th century arranged marriage intra-caste intra system of perpetuating the caste system that we know is is violent and oppressive. Interesting, huh? That's the two Bharat that I embody and you embody. So if you're looking for two Bharat, don't look for rural love. If you in yourself, you find it. Most men will be interested. Most men, uh, I don't know about you, but you know, some of the workshops, and I, I do workshops on patriarchy and gender. I have two patriarchy and gender workshops with men. And you'd be surprised that a lot of young men in their early 20s still want to, are still quite firm that they want to marry a virgin. Yeah, in cities. And 40% of all Indian married women in the cities have been beaten by their husbands. 40% in cities. So here is Mukesh. So Mukesh uh, made a video on corruption in schools. Can we click on this please? Jangan macam 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 jangan mac